Player two has entered the podcast. Nothing to it but to do it. Let's start the show. Welcome, welcome back, people, to Player Two Has Entered the Podcast. My name is Michael Peterson, aka MC Paperstacks. I am your co host, along with my co host with the co most, Derek Murkison, aka Full Metal Merc, baby, aka Murky Boo Boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing around with the uh the clean feed and i wrote goofy names for us well actually just for you just for me i was gonna say my name i don't get to write because i'm like registered or whatever as the guy so i missed my opportunity mm. dang guess it's just you with the goofy names yeah oh well oh well what you gonna do <laughs> so this week not a whole lot happened in the gaming news world but i think we got enough to talk about i got my ps5 Ooh, lucky boop, boop, bastard. Boop, boop, boop. You know what? We're going to talk about that in a second, but I want to save that, kind of rattle off a few other current events, and then we'll we'll get into it, because I think that's going to be the bulk of the conversation here. Yeah. So you got some pickups, a few good stories out on the road today. Let's hear it, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this week was pretty good for college football pickups. Ooh. So as you may know, NCAA 14 is the last college football game that was made because the players decided that they didn't want their likenesses used without getting paid, which makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. So there hasn't been a NCAA game made since 2013, which would be NCAA 14. Right. All this to say that it is a expensive game. Yeah, rather than pay the players, they just decided to stop making the games. Right, which is Thank you, bullshit. capitalism. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, we'll just stop making it. We make enough money off of you without it. Yeah, no, <laughs> anyway. it's fine. We're, we're not going to disrupt that apple cart, so uh, sure. Yeah, so I actually found two copies this week, mm. uh, both at pawn shops. Nice. So I found one, I walked straight in, and usually when I see the case, I open it and it's like the wrong game, or the mm. game is just scratched beyond all belief somebody's skating around on it yeah right but, yeah sports but I picked, games get abused man <laughs> man and especially like some sports games are just fine but like the hard to find ones are always messed up mm-hmm. almost always but this one was in perfect condition it Good. had never been resurfaced or anything i was like oh mm. and it was like 75 cents like wow yeah and the next one was more interesting i walked to the pawn shop i saw they put some new games out and they were just all sports games but i did see a GameStop case for NCAA Basketball 09, which Mm. led me to believe that they had other NCAA games. Uh So I didn't see 14, Mm -hmm. but when I looked through the cases, I opened up NHL 12 and NCAA 14 was inside. Bam. And I was just like, oh my God, it pays to look, baby. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so, ooh, man. Let me ask you a question. So a thought just occurred to me. When you get a really rare game like that and it's only to disc, do you give any effort into getting a case or a sleeve for that game to up its resale value? No. Well, especially with a game like this, the case doesn't provide much extra value because people just want the game. Okay. It, it just it literally just depends. Like if I found a copy of, say, Rule of Rose mm-hmm. and it was just the game, then mm-hmm. yes. Having the case in the manual would up it significantly, but uh, yeah, no. For uh, sports games, it doesn't really do that, uh, especially on Amazon. Like stuff sells for much higher on Amazon, whether it's got the case or not. Interesting. So you know, and I usually have like a loose case or something around because, like I said, sometimes the game's not in there or the game's really scratched up. So mm-hmm. you know, okay. but yeah, just just one of those. Just you walk in and you just shake and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened. I can't believe that's, this happened. No, that's a great pickup story, man. Yeah. So we all know the PS5 launched this week and all of my friends, every last one of them, you included, Mm -hmm. got one. Mm -hmm. And here my ass is without one. (laughs) But I have plans. Okay. What's the plan? I've got a bunch of credited disc replay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I figured out that they will be selling the PS5 when it comes in at 450. So then I have a 20% off or I will at the time. And that'll be 20% off of $450. let us just call it 400 And then I have the in-store credit. So I'll end up paying maybe like 100 bucks out of pocket for a PS5. So that's, that's my bad. yeah, that's my plan. Mm-hmm. I'm sticking to it. But I almost broke down. Yes, was it yesterday? When Wal- no, Thursday when Walmart started was selling theirs mm-hmm. at uh their scheduled times. I almost broke down. I was putting in my credit card information and everything. And then I, I was like, no. Stop it, Derek. <laughs> yeah. Because I really don't want to spend 500 actual dollars on this thing as mm. badly as I want it. 
You know, I think that's but, wise. I mean, because yeah. you you have a good plan. That's a good setup. And I'll, I'll tell you this because it was something I was going to mention. I mean, we can get into like my experience with the PS5 and how that's going. Let me quickly rattle off one more piece of news before we get into it, though. Disney Plus dropped a release date for WandaVision. Okay. It's going to be January 15th. Nice. So here in less than two months, you uh, will get your WandaVision. You'll get your Marvel Cinematic Universe fix. Yay. So look forward to that. So yeah, PS5. I was talking to GP and AD about it last night because I was playing Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer with them and they're on their PS4s and I'm on my PS5. Right. Interestingly enough, when AD, he's the Ronin, when he was laying down his healing circle, I couldn't see the healing circle at first and I was like, oh, the PS5 can't see healing circles? Right. <laughs> Zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm sure it was some sort of glitch. Eventually I saw it, but they were asking me about it and I was just kind of being very honest and rattling it off. You know, there's a few reasons why you want a PS5. Chief among them, I think, is the SSD. And it's true the loading times are a little better. Like I played The Witcher 3 and I fast traveled from one side of Novigrad to the other and it took like seven seconds. So that wasn't Ooh. too bad. But I tried to fast travel from Skellige to Novigrad and it still took almost a minute. Oh, no. You know, and the thing is, that's not the upgraded version. The upgraded version for Witcher 3 that's supposed to really take advantage of the PS5's capabilities. And then, of course, my free upgrade that'll come along with it because I already own the game. It's right. not coming until next year. In fact, I was looking into the compatible list, and it looks like a lot of games, unless they have coinciding PS5 releases that are coming out now, like Miles Morales or Cyberpunk, uh -huh. probably won't have their PS5 upgrade versions release until next year yeah and so you have that you have the fact that it's it's major games like miles morales and cyberpunk are available on the previous gen systems and again you get that free upgrade later on to me it's cool like I, I was having fun screwing around with it playing with astro's playroom and like looking at all the features but the hd rumble on the controller it's just like the switch hd rumble so i'm used to oh, like yeah. the features of that you know what i mean it's just implemented in a playstation controller instead you could say it's slightly better than maybe like the Pro Controller on the Switch, but I can't say that for sure because I have a lot of different experiences to pull from on the Switch and only like a tech demo-y game in Miles Morales to pull from on the PS5. So for me right now, they're comparable, right? Okay, cool. And for as a streamer, like I can hook up my PS5 directly to my TV and I have access to the HDR and the dynamic range and all that, and that's cool. And of course I have access... For me, the jump from vanilla PS4 to PS5 is pretty big because I don't have a Pro. Right. So now I have those those new options, you know, like the frame locks or the performance mode and all that, 60 oh, yeah, frames and all that. Oh, you never did have a Pro. No, I never Dang. did have a Pro. So Ooh. for me, it, it kind of was a cool jump. But even with that said, I mean, if you have a Pro, you extra don't have a reason to get this early. I mean, it's just another system. To me, I justified it because it's something for us to talk about on our video gaming podcast. And I am a streamer, so I can be one of those ones that, you know, early adopt. Right. But my show really isn't that popular, neither of our shows, to justify it. It was really just because I happen to have the cash. You yeah. know what I mean? I decided to spoil myself. I very rarely get consoles at launch. I think this is probably... I wouldn't say the first time because I feel like PS2, I kind of got it within the launch window. But as far as getting a console on launch day, I don't know if I've ever done that. Yeah, I've never done it. And this was going to be my time, but nope. But again, I think it's wise. I think for those who are lamenting or wondering if they should go ahead and go for it. I mean, if it's not going to break the bank and you have the extra money, you know, treat yourself. But if you're contemplating it and you feel like it's a little bit too much right now or you feel like, I wonder if I can wait, you could totally wait. You could totally yeah. wait. So don't feel bad at all. One of the things they did have implemented at launch and the reason why I was able to tell you the story about playing with AD and GP last night is because they immediately made it so PS5 players can play all the backwards compatible PS4 games and play with PS4 players. That's pretty dope. So all your friends have PS5s. You can still play with all your friends. You could have hopped on with us last night and I'd have been right there in the team with you. We kind of needed you. We were a lot less drippy. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we ended up like failing getting gold on one of the survival missions over and over until like a Randy joined us and he was actually pretty decent. Okay. But trying to trying to do the the gold level survival missions in the Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer with just three people instead of four, it's rough. Yeah. But yeah, that's my two cents on the PS5. I think it's something that I think it's superfluous to get it right now. I'm not saying that it's like completely worthless. If you want it, go get it. But I'm saying like if you 
are considering waiting, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not really missing out. Yeah, and just for our listeners, just so they know, this is going to be a heavily PS5 episode today. Because like yeah. you said, there was not a whole lot of news this week. So Yeah, but yeah, we'll, no. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we, get to I mean, that later. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so uh, let's get to what we're playing. What were you uh, playing this week? Well, hold, hold on, hold on. Sorry, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I had, I had two more uh, current event things. Sure, sure. So my buddies, uh, remember I said all my friends have them. So my buddies, uh, Jordan and Vinny, they wanted me to like come over and do the whole, uh, we're going to get on our laptops and our phones and everything and have every single website open mm-hmm. in order to get it. Uh, I was not down for that because, like I said, I didn't want to spend the 500 But they actually ended up doing it, and they got both of theirs through PlayStation Direct like a full two minutes before anybody knew that PlayStation Direct had any up and ready. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, that's dope, guys. That's really dope. Like I'm not I'm not hating on nobody. I do really want it, but ah, I can't justify it. I can't justify it. I want to play Miles Morales so bad. And I can on PS4. PS4. I definitely want to play the best version. Like Yeah, you want to wait a little bit. Yeah. I think it'll be worth the wait. I was playing um a little bit of it yesterday and having a really good time. And I'll be I'll be streaming it tonight, which as of the time people listen to this recording, that will have been last night. So right. my first Saturday night mainstream. Yeah. With Miles Morales. Yeah, and here's a here's a story that really kinda as Peter Griffin would say, grinded my gears. Grinded you know, my gears. Like grind grind <laughs> my gears. So I'm at the exchange and it's this uh video, used video game store uh where we're at. Oh and, Peter, everybody knows what the video game exchange right. is. Please continue. <laughs> it's uh <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm in there, I'm talking to the manager, and I'm like, yeah, the PS5 launch, blah, 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 I couldn't get one. And this other guy comes in with his daughter, she's maybe, hmm, he's probably like two, and he's holding her, he's like, yeah, man, uh, when I was at in line for the Xbox One, or the Xbox Series X, uh, there were guys rolling up, like, wanting to pay money for our spots in line, like, this one guy was like, hey, I'll give you uh, $1,100 for your spot in line, nobody moved, he's like, look, I'll drop two stacks right now for your spot. And we could have made some money out here in these streets. If it wasn't a pandemic, I'd have been in that line. Like, yeah, you can give me my spot. Right. And I looked at him and I said, you took it, right? He's like, no, because I don't need two grand. I s- and that pissed me off so hard. Mm-mm. I like, I was like, you privileged asshole. <laughs> you have, well, here's the thing. Like, you've got, because me, I'm looking at it like you've got your two-year-old daughter in your arms. Mm-hmm. You know what you could have did with two grand instead mm-hmm. of having an Xbox Series X for her? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this and this is for the Xbox. It's not for the PS5. And, mm-hmm. and I say that because the Xbox doesn't really have anything exclusive at launch to play. And I feel like it's going to be easier to come by an Xbox than it is a PS5. Mm-hmm. Probably around the holidays or early next year. Oh, because they don't have to be imported. Right. So you know that 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 rubbed me the wrong way because I was like, man, I could have I could have had two grand if I would have just stood in line <laughs> <laughs> and two grand for free, tax free, mind you. And that's just. <sighs> I don't get yeah, it, man. I don't yeah. Get two it. stacks don't drop out of the sky every every day, man. That's yeah, true. Even even if you don't need it. Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing. Just... Like, I I could comfortably say that if someone was trying to pay me two grand to do something uncomfortable, that I could say no. But mm-hmm. that to me, like you said, that don't sound too uncomfortable. I'd have been right. like, you know what? For two grand, shit, I can wait to get an Xbox later. For on. two grand, I will move. Literally, <laughs> not not move from my home, like just like, I know, I know move from mean. my spot in move line. My, my spot in line. <laughs> yeah. And like, what like, you mean? I I can stop my legs from hurt. Maybe we'll get some nice lunch. Yeah, sure. Right. Sushi on everybody. Or I can buy a Xbox Series X four times over when the price is up. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But yeah, that that's me. That's my week. A little bit of a heartache with the PS Five, but you know. Let's flip it, it though and talk is. about the guy willing to pay two thousand just to stand in line oh and pay five hundred. That's Bro. privilege. Yeah, I mean, hey, wow, I'm with it. I'm with <laughs> it. If I was there, I'd be like, all right, see y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have fun playing the same shit you've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's that's current. That's current events for me, man. Very very eventful week. Very excited to get talking about this PS5 and Xbox stuff. So yeah, 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 cool, cool. All right, well, let's get into what we've been playing then. What you been, uh, what you been playing this week? Trails of Cold Steel Four. Still, I am twenty hours in, and I am loving it, loving cool. it. It is everything that I needed. So, like I said, this is this is the fourth game in the series, and literally, like every single person that's been in your party mm-hmm. along the past three games is like at your party at some point so like at one point i had like mm, 20 people to choose from or something like that something close to 20 people to choose from 
to be in my party. And I knew each and every one of them because the game does such a good job of fleshing out the characters. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of dialogue and whatnot. Right, right, right. uh, Do you still have my copy of Cold Steel 1? I do, sir. Okay. Do you plan on playing it? Because if not, I'll just take it back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know i've been looking at it being like should i start playing this i i kind of do want to try but i know it's not going to be anytime soon man to yeah, be honest I, I so that's just mm-hmm. the way it is like i yeah. trust you when you say a game is good although i do think you have a little bit more tolerance for anime bullshit than i do oh yeah so that's why like i remember when i the first 20 minutes of east 8 i was like oh this sucks doesn't it oh no and then as soon as i got to the island i was like oh Oh, this is a good game. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. You mentioned anime bullshit because uh, when I was playing last night, uh, <laughs> it's the, the biggest anime bullshit, like power of friendship and all that stuff was like happening. And I was like almost in tears. <laughs> they, were go- they were going in. Oh, you mean like yeah. tears, of, tears of joy and emotion yes. or tears of frustration? Tears of joy and emotion. <laughs> oh, my God. Because yeah, I was you- like, yes, anime. Yeah, I got to tell you, I wish I had that love that you have. I had it when I was much, much younger, and I think I just oversaturated myself. I mean, God, when I was in my early 20s, my late teens, if I was in a gaming store and I saw anime eyes on a box, I was like, buy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? No matter what's what an, it was. What's an example of an anime game you bought? Oh, just sight unseen that I know anything about it previously, Chrono Cross. Yeah, okay. I end up loving it, and Chrono Cross is anime as heck, and there's like a yeah. million characters in it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could probably go back and think about other examples, too. I mean, it, it's same thing with anime. Like, back when Toonami was on, I used to binge watching, like, uh, you know, Inuyasha and... Kagome! Uh, Trigun, and... Uh, yeah, I actually still have, like, some Inuyasha, like, seasons, full, full-on full seasons on DVD. Oh, wow. And um, Cowboy Bebop, of course, that's where I discovered that show. Mm. You know, and then, you know, some of the more adult animes actually still kind of dig that older 80s style animes like Ninja Scroll. Oh, my God. Ninja Scroll yeah, is fucking Scroll's amazing, dope. dude. You remember a uh, Suncoast video? Uh, I do. Yeah, I remember oh, their logo. Man. It's actually playing in my head right now that you just said it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I remember uh, when I was really young because I would have been really young. I would have been like <laughs> probably 10 or so mm-hmm. going in there and just seeing all these anime VHSs and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. You know, oh, it's so cool. I wish I had money to afford all this. Seeing all the Dragon Ball ones lined up, making yeah. an actual uh, picture. Dragon Ball is one I never got into. Well, I should let me clarify. Dragon Ball Z. Okay. I watched the original Dragon Ball because I got like a DVD set of it. I don't think it's the entire series, but it was like the first however many episodes. I kind of dug it. I was like, oh, this is fun. Like little yeah, baby Dra- Goku. Yeah, yeah Dragon Ball. Um, cool. But Dragon Ball Z, I never, I never really caught on to. Yeah. At that point, I was like, it takes too long for them to fight, and I'm over it. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I'm glad you're still enjoying the game. I I love it. Between the console launch and just recovering from being sick last week, I just caught up with a lot of games. Oh, speaking of which, I finally figured out exactly what was wrong with me. You want to know what it was? Yeah. I had salmonella poisoning. Oh, I figured. Yeah, so it was from the food that was prepared for me at Arby's. Arby's in Brownsburg. They don't wash their hands. Don't eat there. Uh, in Brownsburg, Indiana, of course, <laughs> but <Right. laughs> I just, just a twist of fate, man. Cause I was already on a, like, I was already supposed to be on a fast mm-hmm. and I had a lot of stuff to do that night. I had been dancing all night cause of Halloween and I was like, really like just strained and tired and super hungry. And I had to edit the podcast and I was like, you know what? I'm going to last hurrah. I'm just going to delay my fast by one day. I'm going to run out, grab a couple, st- uh, I-, I was going to go to Taco Bell. Right. Cause it was okay. like. It was like uh, when I when I broke the fast, it was like two in the morning or something like that. Oh, that's Taco Bell time. <laughs> right. And I was like, it's time for Taco Bell. I'm going to run out and get some Taco Bell. And then, then you know, then I'll, I'll woosa. And Taco Bell was closed. Thank you, pandemic. What? McDonald's was closed. Thank you, pandemic. The only mm. two restaurants that were open was White Castle and Arby's. And Arby's Ooh. had a smaller line. And I should have went to that White Castle because then Arby's jacked me up now i don't know if you should have went to white castle (laughs) right right i know the one time (laughs) that's true (laughs) it's when it's when it gets between that and salmonella arby's so (laughs) i don't know if you have ever had salmonella or know anyone that's had salmonella but there's a reason why it kills people that jacked me up like we can go into like just how bad i was suffering that week but it was bad anyways i'm taking antibiotics now because my doctor was like yeah we should probably get you on something i don't know i mean you could get over it on your own but it's not common and i was yeah. like yeah I, don't, I still don't feel 100 percent. even now as i speak to you i do not feel 100 percent. but i'm getting there because i'm like a day and a half in on antibiotics so Dope. which is good 
So, yeah. yeah, catching up on a lot of games. So last night I played Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer of AD and GP, the uh, great host of Call It Like I Don't See It. We Ooh. had a good time. Lots of laughs, as usual. Those guys are great. They always have been. I played the demo for Kingdom Hearts Mom, which yeah. is really good. I actually had I a lot of fun with it. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like it was, it was pulling on my nostalgia for the original like games, and I was like, oh, oh damn it, Kingdom Hearts, Don't you did it again, it. you did it again. Yeah. Um, I did bust out Hollow Knight because we were talking about it last week, and uh, I downloaded on my PS5, and I was playing it, and. And uh, that's actually going to get into something I'm feeling on later on. But uh, Ooh, I downloaded it on my PS5. I, I downloaded, <laughs> I downloaded Hollow Knight on my I'm PS5. I'm one of the cool kids. Yeah, <laughs> you are. Yeah, I was cho- like, I remember I was talking to G- uh, AD and GP last night. Like, How'd you get one? I was like, I was chosen <laughs> by Sony. I am the chosen one. I am the new way. Right, I am the way. I've uh, spoken. My, my wife actually stealthily brought me some coffee while we were talking. It's really good. Delicious coffee. Mm. So yummy. Okay. So I also played Hades because yeah. I finished my mainstream on Tuesday. I said that I said that either Tuesday or Thursday would probably be my last day because I was anticipating getting Miles Morales on Thursday. Mm-hmm. I continued playing it casually and I love playing it casually. You would think there wouldn't be much difference from streaming because it wasn't like I was doing any kind of like skill based stream or a speed run. But playing a game casually always feels different from streaming it. Yeah. Always. And so I've been having a ton of fun just really getting into it, being okay with making mistakes and, you know, taking more of my time rather than knowing that I'm being watched and having to move it along. I was comparing myself to a lot of other online players of Hades and looking at like other streams and other reviews and things. I did pretty good. Cool. I beat Hades twice. Within 30 runs, I think, 30 or 31. And I mean, even on my very first run, I got all the way up to the final boss of Elysium. And, and that's that's a rare thing, too. So I feel pretty good. I feel like I, I played that game well as far as like in front of an audience. Dope. Yeah. I'm getting my butt kicked a little bit more casually because I'm like re- more relaxed. And I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, I, how did I get hit by the Hydra here? Right. <laughs> but <laughs> it is what it is. It's If you haven't played it, I would suggest it if... I mean, I know you only play one game at one time, but if you know you're going to be traveling or stuck in one place with your Switch for a while, I think it's a good game to pop in and pop out. And the cool thing, something I recently discovered, because I didn't know this for most of the time I was streaming it, if you're in the middle of a run and you just shut the game off, it auto-saves whenever you enter rooms, or clear mm-hmm. rooms, I should say. So it'll just put your right back into the run that you left off on. Cool. Which is really helpful. So nice. Outlast two. I think I did my last episode for Friday Night Frights this week. It's it's scary. In fact, the, this most recent episode, <laughs> episode three, I had a lot of jump scare. There was one scare where I didn't even scream. It, it I just felt like a heart attack coming on. I was I froze up. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and I had to calm down afterwards. I was like, oh geez, it's just relentlessly dark. Like I remember at the end of episode two, and I was reminded when I started it up that I had to watch a woman getting tortured to death, and I was like, I don't know, if this is for me. This isn't for the babies. Yeah, so if, if you like your uh, horror games exceptionally cruel and dark and unrelenting, Outlast 2 is for you, for sure. But I think I'm going to be picking a different horror game uh, yeah. coming up. Maybe I'll but, switch back over to Resident Evil to cleanse the palate. Yeah, how you felt about that happens to me a lot when I watch like start watching an anime that's like particularly gruesome. Mm-hmm. And I'll just like be like, I can't watch this. And then I'll yeah. eventually come back to it and be like, oh, I should have been watched this shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's good that you're affected like that. It means you're still a person, you know? I don't yeah, understand yeah. people who can watch, like, torture porn, like, hostile and stuff like that and laugh and enjoy it. Because mm-hmm. I'm always like, oh, I, why? Why is this entertaining to some people? No judgments. If you're into it, you're into it. I just, I can't. Like, there's something inside of me that connects too much. I mean, I think there's some people whose brains are wired where anything they see that's any kind of approximation or representation of violence, they cannot stand. Mm-hmm. And there's others that can completely remove fake from reality and they can watch all that stuff up to the most realistic movies and just their brain knows it's fake. I'm somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like I can watch a lot of really violent animated stuff or video games and be okay. And I think when it comes to live action movies, when it gets you know a little bit too realistic, that's where I kind of draw the line for me personally. Yeah. yeah. So it just depends. But yeah, um, I played some Resident Evil 7 because it's one of those PlayStation Plus games that they gave away for PS5 owners. And uh, still good. Still great. Still fun. I like it. 
And let's see what else. Now, games I really got into, I played and beat No More Heroes this week. Because mm-hmm. it's not a very long game. And I, it's a game I always wanted to finish because I got it on Wii, you know, but way after the Wii's hey, and I didn't really get to play it that long. I think I only beat like maybe the first couple of bosses. For those who don't know anything about No More Heroes, the whole conceit is you're trying to get through to be ranked number one assassin. So you have to like fight 10 assassins before you to get into the rankings. Mm-hmm. And in between fighting assassins, you have to make enough money to like pay your entry fee to fight them. And I think where the game really shines is when you're actually going after the assassins. But the open world is too big and there's not enough to do in it. And a lot of the busy work they have you doing making money can get a little monotonous sometimes. Mm-hmm. I feel like this game is just really tasty butter, but spread over like, like just a, not enough of it over too much like old crusty bread. <laughs> That's what yeah. it feels like. The last boss of the game, not the like there's a secret boss, but the last actual boss of the game, the difficulty jump just it it just shoots to the moon. I was like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I was all the way leveled up as far as I could be, me, my equipment, my sword. And I was having trouble. And I didn't eventually beat it, but it, it did not feel fun. So the game is horribly imbalanced. And then I actually went and I previewed No More Heroes 2 a little bit just to see the story. And the main character, Travis, is the biggest douchebag. And I do yeah. not like him. He's, yeah, he's really trash. immature. Like, he is. He's trash. And the opening of No More Heroes 2, the first boss you fight that's not a tutorial boss... He's sitting there with like two beautiful women and he like throws the women at you. And instead of like dodging them or trying to save them or ignoring them, he like runs up with his sword and the other guy runs up too. And they lock swords, but the women are sandwiched in between them and they start slashing and the women get cut up to pieces. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's so hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm over no more heroes. Maybe three will be better. I don't know. But the writer of the story, if it's the same, that dude has some issues. He has some issues. He's got some yeah. women issues. <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, no, he definitely has women issues for sure. We can agree on that. The thing is, I love anime. Not, I love Japanese nonsense, right? I love mm-hmm. Metal Wolf Chaos. I love most of Grasshopper's games. You know what I mean? But right. yeah, like if you look under the surface, if there's any kind of representation of women in Grasshopper games, it's really regressive. So yeah. something to keep an eye out for. I played Bug Snacks. It's trash. Bug Snacks. <laughs> I don't like it. Talking about Bug Snacks. Talking about snacks that are bugs, <laughs> but also snacks. Big snacks. Strawberries walking around. <laughs> Big, I know. I, I texted you about it. I was like, I'm playing Big Snacks. Bug Snacks. He goes, ooh, I want some Big Snacks, baby. Yeah, I need some Big Snacks. It's not trash, trash. I mean, I think it would be fun for like a younger viewer. And they have some like, it gets real sometimes. Like one guy was like, that's why your wife left you. I was like, ooh, whoa, how do we get to there? Ooh, boy. I know. I tried to screenshot it, but I didn't have my <laughs> screenshot thing set up well for PS5. It's light puzzling. And it made me feel really dumb at times because I wasn't like completely familiar with the lingo. Like if you watch episode one, you'll watch me like, aha, and struggle throughout the entire episode. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to play this again. Now, the reason why I played Bug Snacks is because my Miles Morales did not arrive on Thursday like I thought it would. In fact, it's only scheduled to arrive this Tuesday. Mm. So you may ask, well, how did you get a chance to play it? Funny you should ask. I accidentally bought two versions. I bought the standard version. Without the upgrade with the PS4 Spider-Man. And I bought the deluxe version. The deluxe version arrives on Tuesday. The standard I got, I was planning on taking it back. But you traded me. So I opened your version so I could play it. And of course, I'll be getting that to you. And I haven't downloaded any of the codes or anything. Okay, cool. But uh, that's the version I'll be playing tonight. And then eventually I'll get that back to you. And I'll be playing my version uh, come Tuesday. Yeah, which. Uh, it, it's traded for game. that uh, Dark Bowser amiibo. Dark Bowser amiibo. Yeah, I didn't even know you had that. Is there a Dark Donkey Kong too? Yeah, there is. Okay, well, I have to and get that one. Dark day. versions of their uh, vehicles as well. So, and you don't have the vehicle for Dark Bowser, do you? I don't. No. Okay, I think you should just go ahead and give that to me when you find it. But I will buy Dark Donkey Kong from you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. I recently had, and this is something I bought a while back on a humbug uh, from Amazon, and it finally arrived. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Oh, so, I've been seeing that a lot. Yeah, it's on Switch. It's a game by X Seed. It is really fun. The back of the box, I'm actually holding the box right now. It says, Rice is power. Tame the Isle of Demons as the exiled harvest goddess, Sakuna. Battle monsters and restore the fields to their former glory in the stunning blend of intense platforming action and farming simulation. 
So mm. <laughs> of the basic, yeah, the basic story is is that the goddess, she's the daughter of a warrior god and a farming goddess. So she has powers for both. Mm. And she's really spoiled. And you can tell she lived a very privileged life in what they call the lofty realm where all the gods lived. Ooh. There's some humans that cross the bridge, kind of almost like uh, spirited away into the lofty realm because they're escaping... I guess the humans are escaping war or famine in the lowly realm. Right. And they, they get into shenanigans where they end up like destroying a storeroom that was meant as an offering to the high goddess. Mm-mm. And the high goddess blames Sakuna. So Sakuna is banished to this island that's been overrun by demons with the humans. And they have to stay there and work together and figure out why the demons are there, clear the island of demons and take it back. And because her power is tied to rice, you end up planting rice and doing like like they said the farm sim and then going out to different areas and finding monsters and collecting like items and stuff it's got a very satisfying gameplay loop so i'll definitely be cool. playing more of that i had a lot of uh, a lot of fun with it so yeah so am i the only one that's tired of farming sims in my jrpgs <laughs> <laughs> like literally like rune factory it depends um, on how they're implemented because unlike rune factory or stardew or uh, harvest moon it's a smaller part, and it does play into the pa- your power as a warrior, so you get lots of action in this game. Okay. And you can automate the farming part. You just won't get as good of a yield if you right. do. So, yeah, they give you options to skip some of that content, and it's not the... it's. I would say it's maybe 35 to 40% of the game. So uh, I got Vicky Rune Factory 4 special on the Switch because mm-hmm. I figured she loves Harvest Moon. She mm-hmm. loves Fire Emblem Three Houses. She's mm-hmm. going to love this Rune Factory game. Mm-hmm. And Rune Factory is basically, um, you play as this uh, goddess character who falls from the heavens. Very, uh, <laughs> very cliche. Mm-hmm. But uh, the gameplay oh, loop Oh, you're is, saying a goddess that falls from the heavens, eh? Yeah. The gameplay loop is, you know, you farm and build up this your town. While also exploring caves and dungeons and whatnot. In That's a literally RPG. Sakuna. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I was like, she's going to love this. And she starts playing. And she's like, I don't like it. Too much talking. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, but they, she, didn't she play Fire Emblem for like 100 yeah. plus hours? I don't. Right. Okay. I guess. All right. I'll take it back. I'll sell okay. it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I kind of try and uh, ease away from buying her stuff that I don't absolutely 100% know that she's going to be into. Mm-hmm. Like Animal Crossing, I knew after uh, she played Harvest Moon that she was going to be a hundred percent into that. Yeah, she's, she's on there a lot. I see her pop on play. Yeah, she's three hundred percent into that. Yeah. So <laughs> cool. All right. Well, let's get into what little gaming news we have. Not a whole lot happened this week aside from the console launches. There was news that well, yesterday, as time of the recording, it was November. It was Friday the thirteenth. Ubisoft. Ooh. 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 Ubisoft Montreal got swatted. Like, uh, there was a, a fake call about a hostage situation, but it ended up not being real. And the police showed up. And wow. I'm not really sure what that's related to. Just some disgruntled fan or, or somebody or playing games. Or maybe employee. I don't know. Yeah. Well, because uh, from what I read, like, some of the employees, like, escaped to the roof and everything, assuming that this was real. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to figure out how they didn't know that it wasn't if they were in there. But, I mean, it's a, well, it's a big if, building. Yeah, I was going to say, if somebody calls the police or if there's some sort of alert, like when I was working in a building, that you know, not from home, we had a campus of three buildings. Mm-hmm. So if there was some sort of alert, we would have alarms go off and we'd all like know where we're supposed to go or whatever, you know what I mean, in case of right. an attack. So it could be that they were just following procedure, perhaps. Yeah. And depending on, like, who knew something was going on, I mean, it, who didn't. I know one thing, if there was even a hint of attack at my workplace, I'm not going to go check to see if it's legit. I'm like, bye. Right, out of there. So I'm dying for y'all. Mm-hmm. So I get that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that they're okay. Ubisoft employees go through enough, as we all know. Yeah. Don't and, swat people, guys. Yeah, what the hell, man? Don't swat And for people. those of you that don't know what swatting is, it's literally just calling in a fake crime on someone's home or business and having the SWAT team come in. Yeah, basically making the crime big enough, like, let's say, a hostage situation where the SWAT team has to arrive. Right. And exactly. some people have been killed. Yeah. Because of this. Yeah, because YouTubers. I don't know if you know this or not, people out there listening, but the police tend to like to shoot people. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a problem. It's crazy. Even in Canada. Hey. 
A. <laughs> I mean, not as not as bad as America, but I mean, I, there's been mental health checkups where like people have been shot because the Canadian police just bust in guns blazing, and I'm like, really, mm-hmm. Canada too? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man, that's wild. It's a it's it's widespread an epidemic. All right, well, let's just get into it. Console launch speculation, what we've seen, what we've read, what we've heard. I've kind of given you my thoughts on the PS5. What, what have you been hearing about Xbox so far? Uh, Xbox, I haven't really heard anything too uh damning about it, except for there is a uh disk drive issue with some of the units that have been reported oh, what's so up that like you, you'll stick the disk in and it won't go in but there'll be this real loud grinding sound mm. and the disk will just continue to spin like Yeesh. outside of the console so that's an issue mm-hmm. um the thing about that is there are millions of these things so this could just be like a very low percentage uh, iso- defect. Yeah, very yeah. isolated issue. So I don't think there's a reason to get too scared about it, but you never know. Mm-hmm. There was that fake video going around, which I don't know if it actually is fake, but it looks kind of fake where it was yeah. like smoking out of the top of it or whatever. Yeah, it's uh, somebody was blowing vape smoke into there. So that was confirmed? Console. Yeah, it was confirmed by Microsoft. Okay. And like, yeah, they were like, they tweeted, they said, um, it's sad that we have to say this, but don't blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do you're, gonna, you're gonna mess it up, guys. And you're right, that paint job on the top making it look like it's lit, lit up, but it's not. Mm-hmm. My PS5 lights up, though. Ooh, yeah. Electric Ooh. blue. And then, Ooh. I mean, it, it's the same colors you see in the line in the middle of the PS4, but it's on either side of like the fans and mm-hmm. the, the casing and the shell. So I don't even have one yet, and I can't wait for the inevitable replaceable face plates. Yeah. 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 Like, ah. So I need to send you a picture of my PS5, like, snugly in between, like, my entertainment center and this little narrow, like, archway. Oh, no, I saw it. I saw your picture on Facebook. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. There was oh. nothing else that could have fit there. And I was just like, this is like it was made for my PS5. Right. I thought you had rearranged the shelves or something. To no, that's just that. how it that's comes. Just how it that's, that's just crazy. how it is. Yeah. So, that's yeah, pretty maybe, funny. Maybe you should link that. Uh, entertainment center <laughs> <Shout> <laughs> hey guys out, you want the perfect entertainment center for your ps5 and or other stuff <laughs> right because <laughs> oh, there's man. like mine is literally just going to sit next to my tv or stand next to my tv yeah ain't nothing wrong yeah. with that mm-hmm. are you going to do yours uh vertical or or oh, uh, horizontal vertical. Vertical. yeah this is like the first time that i'm like that console needs to be vertical now, one thing to note for those who are planning on getting the PS5, just remember this because it's so it goes against your instincts. The direction you put the disc in, the readable part of the disc, the non-print side, actually needs to be to the outside of the console, not to the inside. Oh, wow. Yeah, I put in, it says put in a disc so we can start downloading something while we're getting your PS5 set up. I was like, oh, I'll pop in Witcher 3, cool. And I popped it in, you know, with the printed side facing outward the console and the readable side inward like you normally do. And again, mm-hmm. if I were to put it horizontal, it would be the printed side up, readable side down. Again, like you do. That's the wrong way to put discs in. You have to put discs in reverse. I had to Google it to make sure I was putting it in right. And I was like, really? Why right. would you do that, Sony? No one ever does that. So just something to think about. Make sure that you know for sure which direction you're actually supposed to put the disc in because it's not intuitive. Oh, you know what? <laughs> now that I think about it, if you were to lay it sideways, you want to put the disc upside down. Yeah, but that's the thing. If yeah. you lay it sideways, you'd have to put the disc upside down. Wait, 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 wait. So is the disc when you lay it sideways, is a disc drive on top or on the bottom? Disc drive is on the bottom. Okay, that's that's the problem. I didn't know that. Yeah. So okay. you would put it in regularly like you would uh, PS4 if it's mm-hmm. on its side? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. for, for those listening, the disk drive is on the right side of the console when it's vertical. And apparently, according to Derek, and I did not know this, if you want to lay it horizontal, you move it kind of clockwise, which would put the disk drive towards the bottom of the console. Mm-hmm. And then the print side would be up. The print side basically goes towards the middle of the console. Yeah. Which to me, it didn't make sense because the way I was eyeballing it, I thought the disc drive would be towards the top. So yeah, it's weird because usually the laser is on the side that's bigger. Like we exactly with the, that with that was Wii my mindset. And that was my mindset. Yeah, the, Xbox, the, the laser would that. be towards more in the middle of the console rather than the outside of it. That's that's why I got confused. All right. Well, maybe this will make it uh, easier to replace. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they learned their lesson back from the PS2 days. God, remember the PS2 disc drive? Mm-hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I think we're at the point where we can probably move on, but any other thoughts about the consoles? Um, anything you've been hearing? Well, other than the, the Xbox doesn't have any games. <laughs> yeah, no, there was the issue of the PS5 being reported to be bricking from rest mode when users were playing Spider-Man PS5 remaster. Oh, the remaster. Just, just the remaster. Okay. And uh, like I was telling you, I don't use rest mode, mm-hmm. but you say you use it often. So is this going to kind of change your... Uh, use of rest mode are you going to use it a lot or it's going to i used to use rest mode a lot more when i had my unit plugged directly into the wall now i have it plugged into a power saver and i always shut my power saver off so that way i don't have vampiric drain from my tv and my consoles right so i am more prone to completely shut my ps5 off in fact right now it's completely shut off but there are times where i'll put it in rest because i know i'm coming back to it later that day Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to use the console as intended. If something happens, then I'm taking that shit back. I mean, what, what can you do? Right. You know? Yeah. But, sucks, uh, but it is some, it is. something I'm keeping an eye on. Yeah. So I'll probably Google that a little bit more. Like when I'm actually playing the PS5 remaster, the PS4 Marvel Spider Man, I might take a moment, take pause, and go, have they f- addressed or fixed this yet? <laughs> right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about. I know we talked about scalpers last week, but it's mm-hmm. a little more prevalent this week since the console's dropped and everything. Mm-hmm. Like people are selling the PS5s, and they're actually selling. For like twelve hundred dollars, I don't understand it. People are, bored. and I saw some that were selling for like nineteen hundred. It's mm. it's ridiculous, and I just wanted to say because uh, me and Victoria were talking about it after we talked about uh, scalping last week. She said uh, what the issue was with it, and I said it's not an issue if someone approaches you, like the guy that wrote up on the people in line and said, "I'll give you this money for this." Mm-hmm. If someone approaches you, willing to give you more money than it's worth. Mm -hmm. then, you know, that's fine. But to buy something and then prey on people's want for that item is just, it's it's unethical to me. Well, because the idea is it's not just buying one. It's buying as many as possible, like buying out all the inventory for a local area. Mm -hmm. So that way people who fully intend on just going to the store and buying their own can't. So you control the supply and then you up the price. Right. And you up the demand of course and there are people that want it so desperately that they'll go ahead and they'll pay that extra money yep and i was uh, hearing people that bought were buying bots specifically so they can just get one for themselves mm-hmm. and, like spending like hundreds of dollars on bots and still not getting one wow <laughs> and that's crazy that is crazy. but uh yeah I, wa- I actually want to shout out this youtube channel real quick uh, mm-hmm. called phoenix resale i just watched a video he posted and he actually gave away his xbox series x and his playstation 5 to people on Facebook that messaged him. Now what he did in order to make sure it wasn't somebody just trying to resell it was he posted a picture of a PlayStation 1 and said free PlayStation 1 for family in need if you need a Christmas gift or whatever. Okay. And so he used that to kind of wade through the messages and the bullshit. And then he found the ones that he seemed like were legit because nobody's going to really try and resell a free PS1 like that. Like it's not Mm -hmm. that deep. They're like 40 bucks Mm -hmm. uh, max. So I just thought that was really dope of him. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Shout I was like, man, man, can I get some of that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in need. Yeah. No, that's nice. That's really nice. The holidays are coming up too. And some of us are doing better in this pandemic than others. So take some time to think about where you're at in life. And maybe instead of just buying a ton of gifts for you and your family, take that money that you would have spent. Find another family to foster. There's plenty of uh, programs out there that can help direct you towards somebody in need. And maybe buy gifts for them instead. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's uh, let's pay it forward this year if we're doing okay. Because I think you and I, more than I think a lot of people in this pandemic, we're actually doing all right. And I think yeah, yeah. that it's time to like reflect back on our blessings and maybe spread that around. So, right. yeah, yeah. I hear you, so I agree. I'm I'm with that spirit for sure. All right. So uh, let me ask you, Derek. Being this week, I know you're definitely feeling that PS5. But uh, mm-hmm. what else are you feeling? <laughs> I am feeling a new anime by the name of Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen, not yeah. to be confused with Jujutsu Kaisen, okay. which is what a lot of people like to call it. But uh, Jujutsu, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's the story of this kid. His name's Itadori Yuji, mm-hmm. and he is abnormally strong for just a person in general. Mm-hmm. And uh, the show is basically about... Uh, I've never seen anime where a kid was abnormally strong. Right. Interesting. <laughs> Especially a high schooler. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically what ends up happening is he uh, ends up 
being possessed by a super powerful spirit and the show is about him becoming a sorcerer of sorts mm. and exercising evil cursed spirits and whatnot and mm. it's really dope the animation is done by studio mappa who is actually doing the next season the final season of attack on titan okay and if this is anything to go by that that next season of attack on titans animation is going to be super dope cool so yeah that's what i'm feeling if you uh want to watch it it's on crunchyroll it's on vrv check it out jujutsu kaisen not jujitsu it's awesome cool all right well this week i am feeling the hollow knight soundtrack by christopher larkin so we talked about its mood that game's mood and kind of like its aesthetic last week and playing a little bit this week i realized like man i'm just into this music so I looked it up, and of course, the album's on Spotify, Mm -hmm. and uh, just started kind of listening to it while I was working, and it's just so chill and so somber, but then there's also some upbeat parts, too, because it is a video game. I really recommend it, you know, just for kind of like a lo-fi type soundtrack to listen to and chill out to, so Mm -hmm. yeah, really into it, really into the work that Christopher Larkin did for the game. I don't know if there are other composers, but his name was the only one that kind of really popped up as I was glancing at it. So check that out. Video game music in general can be really cool and fun and and interesting to listen to and relax to because it's designed for mood, right? Like Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't sleep on video game soundtracks. There's a lot of people out there remixing them and making orchestrated or piano versions. There's a lot of people out there just making music in general for the vibe of specific games. So I think I talked about it before. A lot of Super Giants games, which includes Bastion, Transistor, and recently Hades. Mm -hmm. Soundtracks are just mwah. Yeah. So yeah, but what, what would be your, I, I think we talked about this before. I think it's Final Fantasy X. Is that your favorite yep. soundtrack of all exactly. time? Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. Yeah, I would say Chrono Cross for me or Chrono Trigger, like that, all those the music from the Chrono games, definitely. So cool, cool. All right, oh, well, so. I'm uh, feeling like uh, I'm finally getting back on the mend here. I'm feeling like I'm ready to, what's happening? <clears throat> it's happening. It's great. Power level is rising. Power level is rising. It's over 9,000! It is time for the Derek X Mike Anime Challenge! Believe it, this week we are talking about Full Metal Alchemist episodes 22 through 24 and Berserk episode 8. So I gotta ask you, Derek, Berserk episode 8, was it as hype as episode 7? Not at all. But, you know, what happened? Stuff still happened. Okay. Um, Let's see. The Hawks Raiders and the Band of the Hawk, they're Mm -hmm. ready to infiltrate and take over this castle that's being held by the Blue Whales. Mm -hmm. So Guts and Gang sneak in through the back of the castle Mm -hmm. while Griffith and the rest of the crew is kind of fainting that they're going to attack from the north. But then they. Keeping their attention. Right. And then they run away or they uh, retreat a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Guts. And two of his other men are disguised as soldiers of the opposing side, I guess. Yeah, like going with supplies. Yeah, they're like, hey, we got supplies. And they open the gate and then they just start murdering everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Just (laughs) open that place up. Yeah, and pretty much this whole episode is just a giant old murder fest. Like, there's Mm -hmm. not a whole lot going on. There's swords swinging. There's blood gushing everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then they finally open up the doors for Griffith. They get in. The general is like, screw this. I'm too smart. I need to get out of here. I have to live. And he <laughs> he escapes on a raft and yeah. his men are like trying to drag it down. Like, hey, take us with you. He's like kicking them in their face like, no, get off of here. You can swim. <laughs> Sounds like Adonis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's his name. That's, a, that's like, his name. You'll see him a yeah, lot. He's, he's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. And he's. I feel like he's more so comic relief than anything. Yeah. No, he's show. not to be taken seriously. Like he can be a threat in certain circumstances and you'll see that. But for the most part, he's bumbling. He's constantly making excuses. He's constantly overblowing like his techniques and where in like uh, he's like, I'm gonna use the wind spear technique passed down in the Adonis family for, for three hundred. Generic- yeah, five hundred, <laughs> three hundred. Right. <laughs> yeah, he keeps on just making up shit. He sounds like uh, Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, like, the Armstrong art of alchemy passed down for generations. Yeah, he he uses that same trope, but he's obviously more of a sniveling, cowardly character. Like he's not near as cool as Armstrong. So right, and so uh, Casca's watching guts like tear through all these dudes, and she's like, mm. "Wow, I can see why Griffith actually trusts him," which is kind of because he gets shit done. Yeah, but 
I just thought it was weird because last episode she was so against the idea of guts, and now just mm-hmm. seeing him kill a few people, and she's like, "Oh, okay, I see why you trust him." Yeah, I mean, it's going to be revealed later on, but Casca was with Griffith almost since the beginning, like when his army barely existed. Right. And she's seen the sacrifices that he's gone through to build his army, and she she's bought into his dream 100%. Mm-hmm. And whenever she sees Guts as antithetical to that dream or putting that dream in jeopardy, she obviously hates him for it because she feels like he's throwing away everything Griffith fought for. And she sees that Griffith sometimes will act out of accord to his dream to preserve or protect Guts. And maybe it's a little bit of jealousy because she feels like that he may not do that same for her. And maybe it's just the threat of losing sight of something she's been fighting for for so long. Right. Mm. I mean, again, she came in, Guts kind of stormed into that castle after that soldier that was slaughtering his unit. And then Griffith goes in to save him. Griffith almost dies. That's something that she cannot forgive. right? Right. And then Guts just rolls on up to visit Griffith while he's recovering and doing his whole politics thing with the other generals and the nobles. Mm -hmm. And she knows that Griffith hates doing that, but he's doing it in service of the army. And here comes Guts to threaten that. And she's like, you are selfish and spoiled. and You have no idea what you're doing to Griffith's success and his plan. Right. Right. And she's frustrated by that. She seems to be the only one like fighting against that. So I understand where she's coming from. And it does seem like almost irrational or selfish sometimes, but it eventually makes sense. Yeah. And so uh, let's see, they capture it and there's just bodies everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just the ridiculous amount of bodies. And they're all like congregated around Griffith and Guts and Costco. And they're like, yeah, we did it. Yeah. And then uh, there's one lonely soldier and he's about to shoot. At Griffiths with a crossbow, and then what's the character's name? The blonde haired, the one who throws the knives. Yeah, the one who throws the knife. Judo, he's awesome. Yeah, Judo throws a knife like so quickly. He notices this guy and hits him in the neck and kills him. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, yeah, (laughs) 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 and it's just, it's just so fun. Yeah, uh, how hype they are about killing people. I don't. don't (laughs) Yeah, they're all really young too. Yeah, you've noticed. Like, yeah, it's crazy, man. There's a lot of children in his army. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, I say children, I mean like teens, but right. And so then we transfer to a scene where the king is basically giving praises to Griffith, Mm -hmm. and uh, is he knighting? He delivers. Right. Is he knighting him at this moment, or did he already do that? He, I think he made him an official part of the army, and I think eventually he either knights him or makes him a general. I'm not sure which happens in episode eight, though. Okay, it's definitely not making him a general, because the okay. next scene shows the king's brother talking with this egghead dude, mm-hmm. and I don't remember, I can't remember these names. There's I just... think the egghead guy, I know what you're talking about, I think his name is Faust. He's mm-hmm. one of the nobles, kind of think of like the king's cabinet, basically, right? Okay. And the general, of course, he's the top general of the king's army and also his brother. And I actually don't recall his name either, but he'll he'll be important. So we'll, we'll need to learn his name and refer to him later on. Yeah. And so uh, he overhears some castle maids talking about how awesome Griffith is and he knows how to treat a lady and he's and how so he's, graceful. Like, better than everybody else in the army. Yeah. Right. He's more <laughs> graceful than any woman. And <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, he knows how to treat a woman, and those snobby nobles don't have half as much grace or power grace or, or demure, yeah, yeah, yeah. As gossiping him. hands, and, yeah. And he's like, <laughs> "Hey, shut the hell up, talking all that shit." <laughs> yeah. And then so Faust rolls up, and he starts just basically putting ideas in the king's brother's head, like, "Hey, what if uh, you know those beasts in the forest that you see, a stray arrow might hit them." Stray arrow laced with poison, maybe. And then he's like, what are you suggesting? Hey, man, I'm just saying, beast, forest, stray arrow. <laughs> the reason why he's recommending that, and I think this plays into what you were talking about, there's this festival of the hunt. It's like a tradition for nobles where they like chase down foxes or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You know, foppish things that lords do to idly yeah. spend their time. Griffith was chosen as one of the army leaders to oversee that event. And yeah. it's like a big honor for them to join in. And of course the brother's pissed about that. Cause but since he's there, the that does it. exactly. Since he's there protecting princess Charlotte and the King while the hunt is going on, that provides that opportunity. If a straight arrow were to go along while somebody's hunting and it hits somebody, whoops. <laughs> right. So yeah, what we're looking at, what we're seeing right now is the beginnings of a possible plot to assassinate Griffith. Yeah, and I have a feeling that it's not going to go well. For somebody. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's pretty much where the episode ends. It ends with uh, the King's brother kind of smirking. Like, mm-hmm. mm, yeah, we're going to mm, do this. Yeah, oh, get rid idea. of Griffith. Because mm, okay. mm. I'm jelly. <laughs> jelly. So jelly. All right. All right. Well, there's one scene in that episode I'd like to point out because I think it's really indicative of their relationship. And I want that to be in your mind as you're watching the rest of the episode. Mm-hmm. If you recall, when Guts storms that fort or that castle, wherever you want to call it, that's part of the Emmy territory and they're taking it back. And Griffith comes in from the front and they kind of pass each other. Yeah. There are two frames. The first mm-hmm. frame shows Guts in the foreframe and Griffith in the back of the frame. Mm-hmm. So you only see the side of Griffith's face that is facing Guts. Right. And you only see the side of Guts's face that is not facing Griffith. And when you see that, it looks like Guts is smiling, but not at Griffith because he can't see that side of his face. Right. And you see Griffith, it looks like he's smiling, right? Mm-hmm. But when you switch it around and you see the second frame, it's the side of Griffith's face that Guts cannot see and the side of Guts' face that Griffith can see. And it looks like Guts is scowling at Griffith and that's what he yeah. can see. And it looks like Griffith is scowling. Yeah, and I, I noticed think, that. Yeah, you did notice that. So it's like... Griffith is being sweet outwardly towards Guts, but then secretly he's still kind of like leery. Mm -hmm. And Guts is being mean outwardly towards Griffith, but secretly he admires him. Right. And that's important to, to hang on to. I think. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, wait, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's very quick and artfully done, and it's like it's a really good microcosm of their relationship in that moment in time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So dope. Cool. All right, well, let's get to it. So we got episode twenty-two of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Backs in the distance. So if you remember from the end of episode twenty-one, Fuhrer King Bradley and Gluttony show up just like they were trying to lure out Homunculi. And Ling and his servant slash assassin, whatever you want to call her, Lan Fawn, were waiting for them. And at the very end of the episode, Fuhrer King Bradley wounds Lan Fawn. Like, he swipes right at her and, like, mm-hmm. gets to her. Lan so, Fawn! <laughs> exactly. And Ling is very upset by that. So he tries to sc- escape with her while she's wounded. And they're, like, attacked and cornered by King Bradley and Gluttony. And you're wondering if they're going to escape. And they kind of just leave that hanging. Mm-hmm. And they shoot to Winry, who is kind of realizing, oh my goodness, you know, the Elric brothers might be in trouble because she's starting to hear all the commotion about them when they're fighting Scar. So she heads to where they're fighting Scar. And she overhears Edward questioning Scar about killing Winry's parents. And so she learns this, like for the first time, that this man that they're fighting is the man that killed her parents. Mm-hmm. And she's like kneeling on the ground and in shock and she sees a gun and she picks it up and she aims it at Scar. And then we get a flashback where we find out that Scar had a brother who was researching alchemy and he was researching both sides, alchemy from Zhang and alchemy from a mistress. And that he's the one that had tattoos on both of his arms, one to create and one to destroy. And they're, it's back in that war when they're all being, all the Ishvalans are being slaughtered. And you find out that Scar is like mortally wounded and he loses one of his arms and his brother actually uses alchemy to bind his arm to Scar. So Scar ends up getting the destructor arm and that's the reason why he's able to use that alchemy to like completely yeah. wreck shop. So they were attacked by a state alchemist I didn't recognize in that flashback. Okay, uh, so uh, that alchemist is Soft J. Kimbley. And you actually see him in the first episode. He's the mm. guy that uh, the freezer dude went to recruit in the jail cell. Mm. Yeah, okay. So that's him. Okay. So that's a that's a really far yeah. back callback. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So when Scar wakes up in the hospital where he's being treated by Winry's parents and he realizes that he, the arm he's looking at that he's holding up is not his brother's arm, but his. And he realizes that his brother was killed. And he sees the blue eyes of Winry's parents, the same blue eyes of all the soldiers that were killing them. He just goes berserk and murders mm-hmm. her parents. Yep. So it was not premeditated. It was more of in a, in, a, in a psychotic rage, which is completely understandable. His family and his entire way of life in his village was destroyed. Right. So Edward tries his best to intervene between Winry and Scar. And when he like jumps in front of Winry to stop Scar from attacking her uh, before she shoots him, Scar just remembers his brother jumping in front of him and he kind of like runs off and Alphonse chases after him. And then Edward's trying to, you know, console Winry and get some soldiers to kind of take her to safety. Very sad scene. Yeah, no, it was, it was very emotional because 
she was like, why couldn't I shoot him? And he like holds her hand and he's like, he's talking about like all the healing that she's done, like between him and, and other people and the, her auto mail work. And he's like, these hands, he's like, you delivered a baby. You saved two lives. You gave me my arm and my leg back. These hands aren't meant to destroy. They're meant to save. They're meant to yeah. heal, you know? And it was, it was a very emotional moment. And you shoot to the next episode and Edward leaves Winry in the custody of the state military. And they shoot back. Bradley's still chasing Ling and Lan Fawn, like just doggedly chasing them yeah. down relentlessly, uh, along with Gluttony. And then he sends Gluttony off to find out what's going on with the battle with Scar and uh, Alphonse and Edward. Edward finds Alphonse, and they start fighting against Scar. And then Gluttony arrives, and then they all just start fighting Gluttony instead. Mm -hmm. Ling then shows up. He somehow was able to shake Bradley, but he doesn't have Lan Fawn with him anymore. And he's able to capture Gluttony because they basically break Gluttony down and Gluttony's trying to like reanimate like, you know, how monkey do. And right. they bind him with steel cable. So that way, when he does finally go back to full size, he's like stuck. Mm -hmm. So they basically have him bound and he can't move. Lan Fawn was actually able to escape Bradley because she cut off the arm that was already injured and strapped it to a dog. So he was chasing the blood trail from like a dog that was running off with her arm, which well I was played. like... Clever. It was kind of like a callback to when Ed used his fake mechanical arm to, yep. to like, trick her during their first battle. Mm -hmm. Which is so, uh, it's just one of the cool things about the show. Like, the characters actually learning shit. Yeah, there's a lot of callbacks, definitely. Through, so, yeah. so, just as Ling and Edward and Alphonse trap Gluttony, Hawkeye shows up, pops a round off in Scar's leg, to injuring him. They throw Gluttony into her car, and then her and Ling drive off. And they're about to capture Scar, and then the other girl from Jing shows up. May, I think yep. it was. Yep. And you know she's obviously she's endeared to Scar, so she tries to like save him, and she ends up using Alkahestry to like make a huge smoke screen, and they escape. But uh, she left her little panda behind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which Edward was giving Alphonse a hard time about. He's like, "Why are you always picking up stray animals?" He goes, "But it's so cute." And um, Let's see, after the brothers get back and they find Winry, they explain everything to her and she's kind of like depressed, but then she gets a call when they're back at the hotel and come to find out all her customers are wondering where she's at in Rush Valley and they miss her. Yeah. And it finally clicks with her like, man, I really am glad you stopped me from shooting him. I couldn't face all the people I help if I had shot someone. And you're right, I am supposed to help and heal and create. So she heads off on a train she starts to have some flashbacks about Edward, and she realizes she might be falling in love with him, which, I mean, duh, it's all that coming from my right. way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Edward and Alphonse join the others at a hideout. So that's Mustang, Hawkeye. I think they brought in uh, Dr. Knox to treat Lan Fawn. Mm -hmm. And Ling reveals to Edward and Alphonse and Mustang that King Bradley... The Fuhrer is a homunculus because he discovered that during his battle with him. Right. And when Gluttony hears that Mustang is one of the people in that hideout, he like transforms and blows off those steel beams and his entire like body turns into like a mouth. And yeah, I was like, I in the center of it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, he's got there's more to him than uh, meets, meets the, the eye, eye, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So it shoots in the next episode and basically he can shoot a beam. That completely like, I mean, he already eats people, but this huge maw that comes from his body can shoot out a beam that basically absorbs or eats anything that it touches. Mm -hmm. So he, he just instantly became very dangerous. Yeah. Um, in the very beginning of the next episode, you find out that Marco is in the custody of the homunculi and he's cooperating with them in exchange for his village's safety. And Envy's like threatening him and reminding him of that. And you shoot to the gang back at the hideout, Edward Alphonse Ling, trying to escape Gluttony, who is just swallowing everything in sight. Mm-hmm. After they realize they're not going to be able to defeat Gluttony, Dr. Knox takes Mustang and Hawkeye. Mustang was injured in the fight. Uh, he takes Mustang, Hawkeye, and Lan Fawn to safety. Edward, Alphonse, and Ling stay behind to fight. And Envy arrives to actually stop Gluttony from harming the Elric brothers, because again, they need them for some kind of sacrifice. But Edward and Alphonse overhear it, and they decide to fight Gluttony, knowing that Gluttony has just been ordered not to harm them. And then right. Ling starts to fight Envy. Ling, by the way, showing some great battle prowess he was yeah. able to hold his Ling own against is, Ling yeah. is nasty <laughs> he was able to hold his own against king bradley we all know what a badass he is and he's doing a pretty good job finding envy during the fight though gluttony freaks out and tries to attack ling and accidentally swallows edward ling and envy so he destroys envy basically mm -hmm. 
Alphonse is like, give them back. And he's like, I can't. I've already swallowed them. They're in my belly. They're in my stomach. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and uh, back in Central, Mustang is trying to figure out who in the military knows about King Bradley and who doesn't. And unfortunately, accidentally stumbles into a room of all the higher ups, the top brass of the state military, re reveals that he knows about King Bradley and King Bradley's there. And I'm like, oh, Mustang is in trouble. Mm -hmm. But further trouble than Mustang, you shoot to the last scene of the episode and Edward is in some kind of weird other dimension. There's blood everywhere and a lot of like corpses. Basically, wherever you go, if you get swallowed by gluttony. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So that's where we left off in episode 24. Edward inside of gluttony's belly dimension and Mustang surrounded by top brass in the military that all know that he knows that King Bradley is a homunculi. Yeesh. So what are you, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? I'm thinking, how are they going to get out of this one? Yeah. <laughs> shit's, shit's going down. No, you're right. Like when you said it kind of pops off from episode 19, it really does. Like yeah. Monkey Liar dropping left and right, but the good guys are getting in worse and worse situations. Like it's looking kind of hairy. Yeah. And here's something I haven't asked you about before. What do you think about the intros? Do you watch the intros? Um, Not like all the way through every single time. No. Oh, okay. Because that's, that's something that I would do every single time I watch the intro. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I'll start doing that. Um, yeah. Do well, they change I that often? They, yeah, they change. Um, there's five intros because there's five uh -huh. parts. Mm -hmm. Well, I've watched the intro for the second part. Yeah. I mean, if I were you, I would only watch each one once because you're trying to go in fresh. Because mm -hmm. sometimes they put stuff in there that, you know, hints at stuff or, you know, outright spoils stuff. So I get you. Yeah. There is one more thing I forgot to mention. I, I think I said this before that the seven deadly sins, I didn't see pride. And I thought pride might be the father, the one that leads them. Right. But Pride actually shows up and talks to King Bradley, but as a disembodied voice. Like they kept focusing on this butterfly that got stuck in a spider's web and was being captured by a spider. Mm -hmm. And that, and then King Bradley refers to the disembodied voice as Pride. And I'm like, who is Pride? Right. Did I see Pride? Did I not see Pride? So Pride is a separate entity than the father, and Pride is also like kind of waxing on with King Bradley about their recent struggles. Right. And King Bradley's like, I kind of like the fact that everything's not going super easy. It makes it exciting, blah, blah, blah. It's weird. So, yeah, something to keep an eye out for. I think Pride's going to make an entrance pretty soon as mm -hmm. um, a major player in this, and I'm interested to see kind of where that goes. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's going down. It's going down for real. <laughs> okay, well, that is our show. So, thank you to the folks out there listening. We appreciate you coming back every week. And if we want to let the people know where they can find those sweet, sweet pickups and deals or locate you and contact you uh, online, where can they find you at? They can check out all the awesome things that I pick up for sale on ebay.com slash str slash gamer goodies and more. I can check out my Instagram where I post pictures of all the awesome stuff I pick up at Gamer Goodies More, and the same on Twitter at Goodies underscore More. Excellent. All right. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at Mike Peterson AL. YouTube channel where I archive my streams is MC Paper Stacks Plays, and I do Twitch streaming Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for a main stream. Right now, I'm playing Miles Morales, and then it's at 8 p.m. Eastern. Mondays, I do Brawlers and Warriors games. Right now, I'm shooting through the story mode of Hyrule Warriors 2, and that's at 9 o'clock Eastern. And then on Fridays, I do horror games, and that's at 10 Eastern. We upload episodes of our podcast every single Sunday on our hub at anchor.fm slash player2 has entered the pod. You can listen to us wherever podcasts are available. Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And of course, if you'd like to reach out to us directly for comments, suggestions, criticisms, what have you, you can email us at mcpaperstacks at gmail.com. If you're on Facebook, I do have a Facebook gaming group you can join, facebook.com slash group slash indie gamers. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah, appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Right, peace.